So, we are going to talk about the bacteria that typically causes... Get on the elevator, ding dong. We are going to talk about the bacteria that causes strep throat. Oh, God. Muting Matt might be necessary at this point. <laughs> might be necessary? Muting is Matt is, is, is a distinct possibility now. Alright, so... Um... Before things go much further down the rabbit hole, Delight. we're going to tell you what this virus is, or what this bacteria is, what it does, how you get it, what you can do to prevent it, and then a few, uh, 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 some general information outside of that. All right, so uh, Gabe, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you now. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so the strep throat, aka streptococcus, is basically responsible for a range of diseases. <laughs> that is group A streptococcus, sir. I don't care. Man. There is a group um, B, which is a, a borderline and STD, but we're not talking about group B today. Yeah, well, we're not going to get into that. That's net. That's next week's episode, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Oh my god, we should actually do this. We should make this like a weekly pot. Anyway, sorry. Continue, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> it basically is responsible for a range of diseases such as strep throat itself and scarlet fever and many more others, but I'm not going to get into that. Uh, its appearance is basically a similar to a chain of cells, and it's vaguely yellow. I don't know why it would be vaguely yellow. Uh... The bacteria can gross. be spread through Graphic coughing light. and sneezing since they reside mainly in the throat, nostrils, and entering the body. It can also be picked up through food or even a doorknob. I'm gonna be just going in circles. <laughs> Alright, so. Yeah, no kidding. The symptoms of, of strep throat only sore throat, pain when swallowing, fever, red and swollen tonsils, <laughs> tiny red spots on the roof of the mouth, swollen lymph, and swollen lymph nodes in the front of the neck. These are the most common. However, there are several others that usually, they typically only occur when you're really young, but it's not impossible to see them when you get older. And those <clears throat> are headaches, stomach pain, nausea, and vomiting. Now, as far as the treatment goes, penicillin or amoxicillin are typically the most common treatments used and they're pretty effective. Now, there's some home remedies that you can use that might not outright kill the bacteria, but they can at least help with the pain. And those are gargling with warm salt water or drinking warm tea with honey and lemon. Um, there, there's a lot more. Basically, sipping warm fluids. There's cough drops. There's a lot of different... <laughs> the mortality rate of Group A Streptococcus. <laughs> Hey, got you to say it now. Is typically 10 to 30 percent. However, this is not for strep throat. This is just for the bacteria overall. Now, what this is generally referring to is stuff like uh, <clears throat> necrotizing fascitis. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to. I'm butchering these names. I'm sorry. But it's basically a flesh-eating disease. And there's a few <laughs> others that are similar to that. Um, I know scarlet fever used to be a big killer. Um, rheumatic heart disease is also caused by this bacteria. So, it, it can kill. It can kill. Now, for the, uh, the global incidence, or essentially the global impact of this bacteria, as far as strep throat goes, there are 11,000 to 24,000 cases in the U.S. alone per year. But the well, global burden, kind of small, really. yeah, but cool. when you compare it globally and to the other diseases that it causes, this bacteria is pretty, pretty wide ranging. Yeah. Um, the global burden is much larger. It has 111 million cases of impetigo, 470,000 cases of acute rheumatic fever. 282,000 cases of rheumatic heart disease each year. Now, as far as preventing the virus or the, the bacteria, it's really easy. Clean yourself. Wash your hands. Don't sneeze on people. You probably shouldn't sneeze on people anyway because thanks to COVID, they probably just punch you in the face. 
Probably but don't. Honestly. Honestly. Mm. I, I mean, if someone sneezed on me right now, I know I would punch them in the face. Like, without hesitation. Fist connecting to face. But, um, don't sneeze on people. Wash your hands with Common soap and water. Common courtesy, people. Common courtesy. <laughs> and then, uh... Like, like I said, you, you can pick it up from surfaces like doorknobs and tables. So if you're out, out in public and you know someone has been sick... Like someone you know has been sick and has touched that surface, just go ahead and be safe. Wash your hands the next time you get the chance. Maybe not do them in front of them. That would be kind of rude. I feel like the but the presentation is a public service. I, I mean, yeah. I, honestly, I might genuinely consider doing more of these. But all right, I think I think that's about it. I think yeah. after this, we'll be able to move on to the editing phase. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for stopping by. Indeed. Um. <laughs> Indeed. Bye. Indeed. Bye. <laughs> Tenno, you are needed.